Welcome to a video segment of the Albuquerque Police Department's 2011 Annual Report. Hi and welcome to the Northeast Area Command. My name is Bonnie Montoya and I'm the Northeast Area Commander. I have a lot of good things going on within the Area Command and I would like to take a little bit of time to talk to you about that today. We have a lot of goals that we set last year and we were able to accomplish most of them with the help of our police officers, our neighborhood associations, our community and business leaders and we were able to have a very successful year as far as meeting and exceeding our goals. Some of the things that we did last year that were very effective is we have partnered with our neighborhood associations to ensure that we're getting the most up-to-date current information on what types of crimes are occurring within the neighborhoods and within the business districts where these folks reside and where they work. Now part of teaming up with our neighborhood associations meant that we were able to get real-time information out to our patrol officers on all three shifts in order to get our resources dedicated to these areas to combat the different types of crimes and different types of nuisance calls that were affecting quality of life. As far as working with our community leaders, what we've done is we've partnered with several of our neighborhood association, neighborhood watch, city councilors, and business leaders that live and have businesses within the Northeast Area Command and we're able to get together, we have meetings and we talk about what's affecting these different folks as far as what they'd like to see the police offer to them in the way of crime prevention and as far as what occurs once a crime does occur um, within these different areas, what we do to help them out and seeing these cases through prosecution. As part of what we do in the Northeast Area Command as well is we have officers who work on problem solving projects and work on different tactical plans to ensure that we are out there, we are visible, and if a crime is reported to us, we're able to go out and we're able to take care of the situation. Now, part of what we've done, and we began last year and we're continuing it into this year, is we use crime analysis and we have excellent information coming from the unit that handles the crime statistics and does different types of documentation of crime trends for us. But moreover, what we're doing here in the command is we're utilizing our impact team to crunch the numbers, locate the different areas where various crimes occur and we receive this information daily and by we I mean all of the patrol officers um, are briefed on it, they receive emails with maps that have different locations of different types of crimes occurring, the majority of which are property crimes which I know is a big initiative citywide and in keeping with the mandates that we've had from our chief and from our mayor, we're also combating these types of, of property crimes here in the area command. By using crime analysis and using the real-time data that we do get from impact and from our crime analysis unit, we're able to get information quickly into the hands of the patrol officers and into the detectives' hands, and therefore they're able to go out and better handle these types of calls and set up operations that do combat this type of crime. Now, other things that we've done within the Area Command is we had our 2011 Holiday TAC plan, which was very successful this year. We had Sergeant Chris Harmon run it, along with um, the supervision of Lieutenant Mike Runyon, and we were able to provide a safe and secure environment for holiday shoppers throughout the Area Command. I know when one thinks of the Holiday Tack Plan, you think of Coronado Mall and the Uptown area, which we did in fact go out and we secured those areas um, for the shoppers in that location. However, we also were out on Paseo at the different um, Coles and Targets and Lowe's, as well as up at Wyoming and Montgomery at those businesses there, including the Target. We have three Walmarts within the area command that we provided um, police officer presence to as well. And those are just naming a few of the different types of businesses that we were able to get police presence at. And overall, we had um, an increase in calls for service, but we had a decrease in the, the types of crimes that were occurring within these um, locations because, and again, I contribute it to having a majority of our police officers out there visible 
and assisting with loss prevention at the various stores, security personnel at the, the various locations, and working hand in hand to try to determine which areas we had that could be problematic. And when I went out um, to neighborhood association meetings around the holiday, they did, my, my participants at these meetings, they did make comments about how appreciative they were that they did see this increase in police presence um, at these locations. And it was a success and we did recover um, over the six week time period where the tactical plan ran, we recovered over $24,000 worth of, of stolen merchandise for our merchants. So they were very appreciative. We continue within the Area Command to work with ARAPA. We continue to work on our POP projects, and a lot of the POP projects we do turn to our ARAPA members to see what types of, of crimes are occurring within the businesses and what they need from us. So we're better able to gear our operations, our TAC plans, and our different projects in that regard. So going into the new year, I foresee that we'll maintain those relations, relationships and build upon those relationships. Um, other things that are happening in the Area Command, we have a real push for more community-oriented projects. Um, we had our safe Halloween trick-or-treat event here at the substation. We've had our officer appreciation um, days here at the substation where our community members, neighborhood associations, and businesses in the area command come in and um, it's a real good event for everyone who attends and, and everyone's able to show their appreciation to the officers and officers are able to talk one-on-one -on -one with different members of the community and that's always a real treat for everybody versus being dispatched to answer a call for service and, and usually that's the only time you would normally get to speak to anybody in the community. So different events like that. Um, we also have um, safety socials that are held here within the area command and we have various units within APD who come out and help with that and we've just had a really good support from our tactical units, our property crime units, and our violent crime units. So I foresee going into this new year, this new phase of what we want to accomplish here as far as our strategic goals and objectives that we've set for ourselves, I foresee us working and continuing to work with our community members, um, with our business leaders, and see what we can do to make sure that we do have a safer area command for the folks that live and work here. Um, with the, the new bid that is coming up, we will see new officers coming in, but under the direction of myself, my deputy chief, as well as, as lieutenants on all three watches, um, and sergeants will make sure that we do continue to provide the same type of service and attack the same types of crimes and hopefully be ahead of these different types of crime trends by using our crime analysis and getting this real-time information as it's occurring so we can better use our resources. And just like everywhere else in the city, resources are limited. However, we're under the philosophy that we don't necessarily need our officers to work harder, we need them to work smarter. And in order for our officers to work smarter, I as a commander have to be able to provide this information that they need to make it a safe environment for officers to work, a safe environment for citizens and, and businesses to thrive here in the Northeast Area Command. The Northeast Strategic Plan, uh, which is going to take about uh, uh, two years, is preparing our civilian staff to respond to any chemical, biological, radiological, or explosive devices left here at the sub or brought to the sub by civilians. The important thing we have to consider is the protection of our staff and our officers. So our goal is to train our civilian staff to identify these hazards. Uh, we've had personnel that have gone to the FEMA training that are certified FEMA instructors in certain areas like energetic uh, materials, chemical, biological, and radiation. And uh, fortunately, I am, I am one of the instructors, and one of my, the goals is to develop a short 15-minute video clip that the officers as well as the civilian staff can look at as the, day, as the day starts so that they can be more familiar and trained up on a, a weekly basis. We're going to develop several series of film uh, that would last 15 minutes and it would not take them out of service, it would not take the officers out of the field, 
but it would be incorporated into the briefings. One of the important things that we also completed last year was to develop a plan in case we have an active shooter incident that occurred here at SUB. We brought all the civilian staff together uh, and we discuss what plan of action should be taken should there be an active shooter. We, took, we take for granted that we always have officers here at a substation and it's, uh, it's, it's uh, well protected. But we, we always have to ensure that uh, in case there's no officers around and we do have an armed suspect come in, that the civilian staff understand where to go, how to protect themselves uh, in case something like this should happen at the Northeast uh, Area Command. Hi, I'm Sharon Press. I'm a Northeast Area Command Crime Prevention Specialist, and I'll be talking about the Northeast Strategic Goal for Goal Number Two. The Northeast Strategic Plan Goal Number Two is to increase uh, neighborhood watches in the Northeast Area Command. Currently, we have 250 neighborhood watches, and we're looking to increase that by 5% over the next couple of years. Uh, with that goal in mind, uh, we're looking at educating our neighborhood association through newsletters and community involvement when we go out and do community events. Um, we'll be working with uh, Steve Sink, our crime pre senior crime prevention specialist, with um, the facilitation of informational meetings and uh, getting the word out there that we want to see more participation from our neighborhoods and neighborhood watch. Uh, also, our patrol officers are going to be working um, out in the field to uh, go into the areas that are um, hit harder with crimes. Our patrol officers are going to be required to make face-to-face -face contacts with our neighborhoods and will, that are receiving higher calls for service in that area, uh, any of the victimized neighborhoods, and they'll also work on doing knock and talks and uh, field briefings with those neighborhoods at um, various times during the patrols. Um, I'll be facilitating sharing of information with our property crimes lieutenant as well as our specialized units lieutenants uh, to have our specialized units start to come out into the areas that are we're seeing an increase in property crimes. Um, I'll also be working with our criminal nuisance abatement unit with any problem properties that are in the area. Um, we're also requiring that our command staff uh, will be required to um, attend the neighborhood association meetings as well to show us support from the command uh, for any issues that they may be having in the neighborhood while we're also trying to facilitate the neighborhood watch program uh, to have a positive outlook uh, from, uh, with the community from the police department. Um, as, we are in, as we progress with the plan to increase the number of neighborhood watch members, we're encouraging them to become more involved with their, also their neighborhood associations um, so we can get a good community involvement. And currently we have 56 neighborhood associations within the Northeast Area Command. Uh, so I'm predicting that we'll be able to get some good neighborhood watch programs going and uh, be able to increase our goal even higher than 5%. Now, in meeting one of our strategic goals, which in fact is goal number three for the Northeast Area Command, we are working on our business outreach and property crime reduction plan. And what this entails is our officers, as well as our detectives and supervisors, when they go out to any type of dispatched call with any type of business here in the command, whether it be a restaurant, a retail business, an insurance company, what have you. Um, what we're doing is we have business contact forms. We're filling those out when we do make a business contact. We're getting pertinent information so that the next time that we do um, receive a phone call or a dispatch or have any type of issue with these types of businesses, we're better able to get with the RP we're better able to get with the management and we have contact information because a lot of times officers are dispatched to these types of businesses and there is no contact information. Um, what we're doing is our crime prevention specialist, Sharon, is creating a database so that we can track all of the business contacts and part of the performance plan for our field officers is they do have to meet and I would prefer that they exceed the number of contacts that they make with the business um, community every month. Now this information that we receive also gives us an opportunity to reach out to 
these business leaders and ask them if there's particular training that they need. Um, we have already had some training for um, our business leaders as far as robbery awareness training, which is taught by our armed robbery unit personnel out of the violent crime section of the department. We're partnering with our detectives over at the armed robbery unit and we have them come out once we identify a, a business that is in need of training, they will come out and they pr provide the training free of charge. And all it takes is us helping to coordinate um, the meeting time and place. And dependent upon what type of situation they have as far as meetings, we do allow them to come into the Northeast substation and hold their meetings here in our briefing room because we do have the space. Um, we also have businesses who reach out to us and say that they would like some training from White Collar Crimes Unit. So of course we, we contact the personnel over there and they've been more than happy and accommodating to come out and do some training for businesses in that regard. Um, we've had other businesses ask for information on narcotics because sometimes they, they feel that there might be some drug dealing going on in their parking lots. So we're able, and it's a unique situation for an area command to be able to reach out to the different specialized units and have that, that full support and cooperation from those units, which only helps us meet this goal that we have set for the new year. Um, what we hope to do is be more visible be more accommodating and do more training because basically when you're talking about combating crime we're all in this together and part of our goal is to make sure that we are providing the best possible service as well as being available when our business leaders need some help from us and again this is one of our strategic goals and we've already started working on it prior to the new bid taking effect and we'll continue working on this through the new year so as far as um, the goals are met, our goals being reached. We are working on meeting them and exceeding them throughout this new year. And again, this only happens with cooperation of our community, our business leaders, as well as our patrol officers and supervisors.